best continues. This game was played just a few hours ago against Chicky playing Jared Golgari Lich Lord. Don't see this one too often. I haven't honestly ever had trouble with it, mainly because the commander I think is so weak. Just four mana for a two-two costs double green and double black. I mean, frankly, you can often just keep them from casting this creature the whole game because that casting cost is so expensive. Kind of put this guy in about the same category as that blue-black hexproof thing. Just high casting cost tends to show up in decks that aren't really quite as good or focused. Mm -hmm. but this game is an exception to that rule. It is quite good and very, very close. Chicky kept seven cards. I will definitely mull or keep this hand because it's got all the soaring defense in the world. Swamp. Yeah, well, all right, that's not soaring, but that is certainly something that I will ban the blast. Pop. Blue Delta. Bayou. All right, Tree Speaker. I kind of just got this read that this was his only green source for some reason. I just don't know what it is. I think it was maybe the fact that he led with a swamp. To me, leading with a swamp just seems like... When you have, I think he top decked that blue to Delta, and I don't think he has green mana. So, with that in mind, I decided I'm going to wasteland the Bayou. Sure enough, no green. He does have Ancient Tomb and a Scroll Rack, which is a little unfortunate, because it's certainly going to solve his green mana problems. There was some merit, possibly, to playing an island, uh, playing, just playing a land next turn, and letting him invest his turn in uh, leveling up the Tree Speaker, and that way I can play Dak Faden on the following turn. Um, while he's busy futzing around with the tree speaker, but I decided not to go that route. It may have been a mistake. Honestly, in retrospect. Alright, Nim's coming down. I could do that play again here, but I decided I just want to get Nim to Panarch step. I'm planning on stealing the soul rack, the, the scroll rack, until he plays the Mazala's Jitte. So now I'm thinking, awesome, running my hands together with the light. I could play, uh, could play Dak here and steal the Jitte, but I decided I'm going to be a little bit more greedy. I mean, obviously he's gonna he's gonna jitte up his, uh, his tree speaker, right? So that solves two problems. Not only does it cut off half of his mana for the turn, but it gets the tree speaker back in his hand. Well, I've got an active nin, and I can shoot it in response to him leveling it up. So it's all sorts of goodness, and he doesn't cooperate. He did not equip the jitte. Naughty, chicky, making my life hard. Activates for catacombs. Gets a swamp, which is baffling to me. Like, why does he get a swamp? Especially when he only has mm -hmm. one other source of green mana in play. Why does he not get the overgrown tomb? He must have it. Two black. Alright. There's Jarrod. Mm -hmm. I do not have a counter. Activates the Jitte. Alright. Fine. I feel like I make a big mistake here. This was the turn to cast uh, Cyclonic Rift right now. Should have rifted the uh, the commander because of the mana that I have available. Because if I rift his commander and I kill and I kill the tree speaker with the jitte, with the stolen jitte, and I have the mana to do that, then it's likely that he doesn't have the double green to replay the commander for a while. So it just gets stuck in his hand. That is absolutely a viable play. I really should have done it. Instead, I do this. And you are about to see something, ladies and gentlemen, that in all the games I think I've ever posted with this deck has never occurred before. Nin steps into the red zone. <laughs> and honestly, when I attacked here, this was honestly sort of one of those just YOLO plays. Fundamentally, I think this was probably bad, too. Um, just because I, I can't kill the Golgar. I'm doing this, of course, to kill the, the Tree Speaker, but if I wanted to kill the Tree Speaker the whole time, I should have just rifted the Lich Lord at the end of the turn. And then I just get this unopposed attack here, and Nin is still in play with a Jitte on her. But I didn't do that, so he just gets a free block. And I could kill the Commander here, but I just have so little respect for Golgar Lich Lord, and I really, really just want to keep his mana under wraps. That I make the greedy play again of killing off this thing. So he's scroll racking. 
And it's it just doesn't make any sense to do that play because um, he's got a square rack and I'm not going to match him. It's just not possible. And in fact, he's going to do the opposite here. Strip mines my volcanic island, kills my Dak Faden now with the commander that was not bounced, and plays this hard thing, Raska. Good mm -hmm. lord. Which, of course, kills my one power stone. So I drop from five mana to two. And now we are in a huge world of hurt. Commander beating away. It's a 3-3 three, three right now. And I fucked this game up. Bloodstained Mire and Birds. How different would this game have been if I had done that the other way? Alright, so I'm rifting at the end of the turn. Bouncing the Nebraska. There's there's definitely an argument to be made for uh, waiting a turn here and letting him level it up one more time, just in case I draw something else, like maybe I draw a Rolling Earthquake, which allows me to keep the Cyclonic Rift. But I figure I really I need to I need to cast Dismiss really to draw more cards and hopefully draw into a good artifact, um, like something like a Thran Dynamo or a Gilded Lotus. And um, obviously I can't do that. I only have four mana right now. I have uh, three now, and I'll have four next turn. So this is the time to cast Cyclonic Rift, even though it's very unlikely that he would just use the minus three ability and, mm -hmm. and uh, bin Vraska to kill one thing. So I'll climb the mountain there. He is down to two cards though, and even with the uh, reshuffle effect and the scroll rack, I'm feeling a little bit more comfortable here. The problem is, is that this thing is a ticking clock, and it's three three, and any creatures I kill are going to make it bigger. Vraska is replayed. Easy answer to that now. Makes up for the lost card advantage of uh, rifting it. Get another land. Bash. All right. Let's check the uh, commander damage count here. Let's see. All right, there we go. Six. Oh, it's six right now. I hate the fact that this whole thing appears like in its entirety, even uh, even though the game is not unfolded at that point, rather than being chronological based on where you are in the replay. There's just so many things that suck about this client, and that's one of them. I loved when it was just melded into the screen and you could see exactly what was going on. It's just awful. Okay. So, in turn, draw another land, I'm going to ponder, and I see a condescend here, so we can pick that up. Almost to the stage of being able to replay the name, but not quite. And that's clearly what we need to do here. We need to get her uh, jittate up right away. All right, seven mana. Well, when you get your car encountered for two, it's pretty hard to come back. And off the top, I've got a bottle, not too useful, and a brainstorm. So I'm going to keep the brainstorm and the bottle away. And now I'm taking nine from this thing. Plenty of health, though, so I'm not too worried. Soul Ring and Counter Spell. When I see those two, I know I've got this game in the bag. Because this allows me to play Nim now. He's only got two cards in hand, and I've got counters for both of them. Really, how can he win? He plays Survival. So I'm going to Counter Spell that. Because Survival plus this guy equals bad times. Mm -hmm. Like, how much green mana he's got. And there's the Overgrown Tomb. One, two, three, four green mana right now. So he could increase this thing's power by f and toughness by four per turn. Mm -hmm. I cannot let survival resolve. It's racking again. I'm thinking, God, please don't play anything good. Nothing good, nothing good. Breeding shot. Alright, that's not a big deal. Especially because he's killing Jitte with it, which I can pretty much understand. More cards for me, buddy. Alright. I'm taking 12 now from that thing. Alright, so all. Gassed up now. No cards in his hand. I need him to blank one turn here. Just one. And I probably got this game, because that's going to be a draw six. He's got Massacre where I'm off the top. Well, I actually, crazily enough, gave some thought to letting this go. Because I know I can just kill Nin in response, so it's not going to not gonna make me lose any life. It is a 6-5, but, you know, if I draw the Treachery or something, then it actually gives me huge blocker to deal with his creatures. I can probably keep the Massacre Room out of play other ways, especially if I draw six cards here. 
But ultimately, I decided that because I get to scry off the uh, the dissolve, it's worth it. You can hear. Uh, there. Okay. So, yeah, I ultimately decided I have to kind of mask room, even though that does uh, pump the Lich Lord up to 4-4, four, four, which I'm really, really reluctant to do. And off the scry, sorry, I missed what, what scry passed, but yeah, I can't use that one right now. So it's taking a lot of extra damage. I really think, again, in retrospect, this is one of those situations where I should have just trusted my deck and I should have just let it go and drawn six in response because in terms of the amount of actual damage it generates, it's not really that different. This is one of those things where I really need to just think, you need to think the play through before you do it. If Masker Worm comes down, he, I don't counter it. I do actually have to use an in in response, of course, because of the Masker Worm's ability. So this guy's one less damage, that's one point there. I get to draw six instead of, z instead of scrying for one. But on the next turn, this guy's bigger now because of the uh, because of the Massacre Worm, and I uh, I've lost the ability to um, utilize you know the extra cards and stuff because I need to keep the mana and have to use it. So might have might have very well been a mistake. Right? He gets another amazing card off the top in the form of Show Dread, which I, of course I have to counter as well. So just for man that. I just can't wait any longer because this thing, I believe, is hitting me for 16 now. So this attack is coming in. Yeah, and I just have to block. I've only drawn four instead of the six. And look at that. Blank, 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 blank. I do have the top, but it's not enough. I draw Mana Leak, which is a solution to the, uh, the Shield Dread. Unfortunately, this guy has dealt so much damage to me now. Let me actually go check again. Thank you, dumb interface. Alright. Twelve. Okay. Dissolve targeting Massacre Worm. Sixteen damage. Okay, so I actually took I'm actually taking twenty. So here's that turn. Yeah, I blocked him that turn. So I've taken sixteen. So basically this thing does four. I've taken 16 commander damage from it. I know that he's got Shield Dread in his hand. I have to counter Shield Dread, of course. Um, which means that Gerard will be a 5-5 five five and will kill me. So it's going to be pretty tough to dig out of this situation. I'm playing the top. I've got to have something like Treachery on top or it's over. I've got Gilded Lotus, Clever Impersonator, and Forbid. Those are Treachery. So, put Gilded Lotus on top here, and we're going to use Nin as an emergency blocker. Because I can just block here and pray. I know that there's a top on top of my deck, so if the very last card, I'm going to have to chump block with Nin here, if the very last card, that card below the last two that you saw, the uh, Forbid and the Clever Impersonator. The very last card, well I guess I have the Clever Impersonator also as an out against the Gogar Lich Lord. Um, just as a temporary blocker. But the very last card is a way to steal Gerard or reset it or do something. I might have a chance here. So sending them all in. Do not block. Because he didn't play Creature. But of course I neglected to uh, think about his secondary ability sacrifice another creature. Mm -hmm. So as soon as one of these guys is sacked, not only do I lose life from it, but uh, go guard a Lich Lord mm -hmm. gets bigger. And there it is. 5-5 five, five coming through. I am dead. Sad. I did think he played the game really well actually at that point. Um, I think he cast his threats in pretty effective order and obviously used his score rack well. He also dismantled my mana correctly. I mean, pretty much did everything correctly. Well, I uh, screwed up a bunch of different ways. I think this game was really winnable. I think that there are a lot of different things I could have done differently. Um, certainly the turn with the early the early play with the Dak Faden and the Jitte was, was executed poorly. If I had just bounced the Lich Lord, 
uh, get Tate up and, in and killed off his tree speaker, that probably would have been enough momentum right there to take the game. He would have followed up with Vraska, but he would have had to use Vraska to probably kill the Jitte, and um, that would have changed the dynamic of everything, rather than him killing my mana off, because I would have been able to control that early part of the game so much better and use the Cyclonic Rift to much greater effect. But uh, kudos to him, well played, and uh, I'll get my vengeance next time. See you guys soon.